Hello dears, good morning. It's me, Ms. Lindsay, your English teacher. Nice to meet you again. Okay now, welcome to the world of English. So, before we begin, let's ask the blessings from God, the Almighty, so that let His Holy Spirit enlighten us, help us and guide us through. Are all ready? Okay, good. Dear children, today we are going to study the second part of the chapter from the diary of Anne Frank, written by Anne Frank herself, when she was hiding with her family in Amsterdam during the Second World War. Now, let me introduce you to the poet. Anne Frank was born on 12th June 1929 in Frankfurt, Germany. She was the second daughter of Otto Frank and Edith Frank. She had an elder sister, Margot Frank. Now let me introduce you to the chapter. This lesson is an excerpt from Diary of a Young Girl. It is an autobiography that was first published in 1947. In this, Anne expresses her thoughts in a diary which was gifted to her on her 13th birthday. She names the diary as Kitty, which she considers as her only true friend. She mentions about her childhood her family, and a lot of other things that she told no one else. Now, we will start with the first paragraph from the second part of the chapter. Children, we will read it together. Dearest Kitty, our entire class is quacking in its boots. The reason, of course, is the forthcoming meeting in which the teachers decide who will move up to the next form and who will be kept back. Half the class is making bets. Jian and I laugh ourselves silly at the two boys behind us, Cian and Jackus who have staked their entire holiday savings on their bed. From morning to night, it's you are going to pass. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Even G's pleading glances and my angry outburst can't calm them down. If you ask, there are so many dummies that about a quarter of the class should be kept back. But teachers are the most unpredictable creatures on earth. I will give you the detailed explanation of the paragraph. On June 20, 1942, and begins writing in her diary, addressing it as her French kitty. She mentions how her entire class is nervous about their results. It is unpredictable and will be decided by a meeting of teachers in which they will select students to be moved to next class or kept back. Many students were making bets. Some had put in their entire summer savings at stake. She and her friend G also made fun of the nervous boys. They kept on saying to each other that, I'm not going to pass. While others would console them and say, Yes, you would pass. G was polite as she tried to stop them from making noise. While and scolded them, but none of it worked. According to Anne, 
about a quarter of class should not be allowed to pass because they hardly respond or take part in any of the activities. She refers to them as dummies. But this may not be the case because teachers' decisions can be predicted. Could you follow me children? Okay, then we will move on to the next paragraph. I am not so worried about my girlfriends and myself. We will make it. The only subject I am not sure about is math. Anyway, all we can do is wait. Until then, we keep telling each other not to lose heart. I get along pretty well with all my teachers. There are nine of them, seven men and two women. Mr. K. Singh, the old fogey who teaches math, was annoyed with me for ages because I talked so much. After several warnings, he assigned me extra homework. An essay on the subject, a chatter box. A chatter box? What can you write about that? I would worry about that later. I decided. I jotted down the title in my notebook, tucked it in my bag and tried to keep quiet. I will give you the detailed explanation of the paragraph. Here Anne says that she is not bothered about her friends because she is sure that they will pass. The only subject that she is unsure about is mathematics. She seems to be having a tough time with the subject. But all they could do was wait for the results and not lose their hope. Again, she tells how she has a great relationship with all her teachers except the math professor. He was constantly irritated by the author's talkativeness. Despite several warnings, and did not stop talking in his classes, which prompted him to give her extra homework as punishment. The first one was to write an essay on chatter books, which she thought was a weird topic to write on because what could one write about that? For the moment, she wrote the topic in her notebook, kept it in her bag and focused on staying quiet. Now we will move on to the next paragraph. That evening, after I had finished the rest of my work, the note about the essay caught my eye. I began thinking about the subject while chewing the tip of my fountain pen. Anyone could ramble on and leave big spaces between the words. But the trick was to come up with convincing arguments to prove the necessity of talking. I thought and thought and suddenly I had an idea. I wrote the three pages Mr. Kesey had assigned me and was satisfied. I argued that talking is a student's trait and that I would do my best to keep it under control but that I would never be able to cure myself of the habit since my mother talked as much as I did, if not more, and that there is not much you can do about inherited traits. Children, we will discuss the paragraph in detail. So here, after completing all her homework and started thinking about the essay, given to her by her math teacher. 
while chewing the tip of my fountain pen is a gesture that signifies a person is in deep thinking and thought of writing her essay in support of talking she mentioned that she will try to better herself as a student but talking is something that cannot be eliminated completely and she added that this is because she got this talkative nature as an inherited trait from her mother this is how she ended up her essay now we will move on to the next paragraph mr kissing had a good laugh at my arguments but when i proceeded to talk my way through the next lesson he assigned me a second essay this time it was supposed to be on an incorrigible chatter box i handed it in and mr kesi had nothing to complain about for two whole lessons however during the third lesson he had finally had enough and frank as punishment for talking in class write an essay entitled quack 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 said mr chatterbox the class roared i had to laugh too though i had nearly exhausted my ingenuity on the topic of chatterboxes it was time to come up with something else something original my friend sain who is good at poetry offered to help me write the essay from beginning to end in verse and i jumped for joy mr kissing was trying to play a joke on me with this ridiculous subject but i had made sure the joke was on him i will give you the detailed explanation here the professor found ants arguments to be amusing but when she did not stop talking in the next lesson also he gave her at another assignment as punishment and what was the topic yes you are right the topic was an incorrigible chatter box what do you mean by incorrigible here it refers to a bad habit that is difficult to change he gave her this topic because he was annoyed of her unstoppable chattering during his lessons on receiving this assignment the professor did not say anything to her for a while but when he lost his patience he handed her at another assignment as punishment on the topic quack 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 said mr chatterbox when the professor scolded her for the third time and punished her the whole class started laughing as a result she had to pretend to be amused too after writing twice on similar topics she ran out of thoughts thus her friend sain who was good at poetry offered to help her write in rhyme this whole assignment was to make annie feel ashamed but she made sure that she gave an effective reply children we will move on to the last paragraph of the chapter let me read it for you i finished my poem and it was beautiful it was about a mother duck and a father swan with three baby ducklings who were bitten to death by the father 
because they quacked too much. Luckily, Mr. Casing took the joke the right way. He read the poem to the class, adding his own comments and to several other classes as well. Since then, I have been allowed to talk and haven't been assigned any extra homework. On the contrary, Mr. Kissing's always making jokes these days. Children, we will discuss it in detail. So, Anne finally wrote her third assignment in the form of a poem, which was very beautiful. It was about a mother duck and a father swan with three baby ducklings who were bitten to death by the father because they quacked too much. Mr. Kissing was very much impressed by her poem and the professor recited the poem in front of the class and he added his own comment too. After this incident, Anne was allowed to talk in the class. Also, Mr. Kissing, the professor, started cracking jokes every now and then in front of the class. Children, hope you could follow me. So now, it's time to wind up the session today. I request all of you to like and subscribe my channel.